This is the first video in a series of videos where we solve a simple maximization linear programming problem. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So RMC Inc. is a firm that produces chemical-based products. In a particular process, three raw materials are used to produce two products. The material requirements per ton are uh, the fuel additive and solvent base. So for material one, we need two fifths of fuel additive, one half of solvent base. Material two, we require zero fuel additive and one fifth solvent base. And for material three, we have three fifths of fuel additive and three tenths of solvent base. For the current production, RMC has available the following quantities of each raw material. Because of spoilage, any material not used for the current production must be discarded. And here's the number of available tons that are available for production. So material one has 20 tons. Material two has five tons. Material three has 21 tons. If the contribution of the profit is $40 for each ton of fuel additive and $30 for each ton of solvent base, how many tons of each product should be produced in order to maximize the total contribution profit? Well, first we are asked, what is our decision variables or what are our decision variables? So we can look at this question and we have two decision variables here. We are asked how many tons of each product should be produced in order to maximize the total contribution profit. So our two decision variables here, we have the amount of fuel additive and the amount of solvent base. So we're just going to say, let X1 equal the total tons of fuel additive and let x2 equal the total tons of solvent base. So in this question we have two decision variables. The first decision variable is fuel additive and the second decision variable is solvent base. So then we're asked, well, what is the objective function? Well, we are looking to maximize the total contribution profit. So our objective function is a maximization problem. So the max of Z is equal to, well, we have two decision variables, fuel additive and solvent base. We're told that we get $40 for each ton of fuel additive. So we're gonna write this as 40 times X1 plus $30 for each ton of solvent base plus $30 per ton solvent base. So our max Z is equal to 40X1 plus 30X2. So this is question one, this is question two. And then finally, we're asked to formulate the model constraints. So let's go ahead and look. So we're told that we need two fifths of fuel additive for material one, where we require zero for material two and three fifths for material three. We are told that we have one half for material one for solvent base, one fifth for material two for solvent base and three tenths for material three for solvent base. And more importantly, we're told that we have the following amount available as a maximum amount of raw material. So let's go ahead and create our first constraint. So for material one, our constraint is that two fifths of X1, so two fifths X1 plus one half of X2 
must be less than or equal to the total number of tons we have available. In this case, the total number of tons we have available for material one is 20. So two fifths x1 plus one half x2 must be less than or equal to 20. Our constraint for material two, so material two, we require zero fuel additive, but one fifth of solvent base. And we're told that we have five tons available for material two. So we're gonna write this as one fifth x2 must be less than or equal to five, right? That's the total amount of product we have on hand for material two. And then finally, our third constraint, material three, three fifths of x1 plus three tenths of x2. And we observe that we have no more than 21 tons of material three. So material three, we have three fifths x1 plus three tenths x2. must be less than or equal to the total amount we have available for material three, which is 21. Of course, we have another constraint that's not listed in the problem. That is that X1 must be greater than or equal to zero and X2 must be greater than or equal to zero. Those are our non-negativity constraints. So very quickly there, we have solved these three questions. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If this video helped to make business analytics easy, consider giving the video a like. And if you need additional help with business analytics, please consider subscribing to the channel. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.